Hello and welcome to Interactive Canon Tech. Today I'm going to be going through Shaper 3D, just a nice basic tutorial. Um, Shaper 3D is a fairly new CAD software on the market and it's available on Windows and Mac and it's also available on some mobile devices as well. It's a nice flexible tool and it's very intuitive so I thought I'd do a nice tutorial to get you started. If you find this tutorial helpful please do subscribe to my channel, all, all support is appreciated and let's get started. So. I've opened up Shaper 3D and I'm and I'm greeted with the Discover page. So I'm going to go to Designs. I'm going to click Start Designing. So now, when I've clicked Start Designing, it's opened up my the model area. So the model area, to break it down on the left-hand side, you have your model tree. And this, as you start drawing and modeling, it'll it'll populate this. So at the minute, the workspace is empty. So the work so the workspace can have bodies, sketches, planes, axes axes and images so I'm just going to leave it on all items for now any drawings you create will come in this tree as well and to get rid of the tree if you want to make the 3d modeling area a bit bigger all you need to do is click the little button here on the left hand side it's called show sidebar so I'm going to click that home takes me back to the screen we were just on uh, with all your designs and the and the discover page unnamed designs your file um, name and then if we carry on going right on the top toolbar you have your section views yeah you have the, the little magnet here which is your snap to options so your snap to options are your grid uh, if you want to get to points grid lines and so on you can turn them on and off and then next to the snap options you do have your units centimeters meter inch foot lock grid and so on and then your little help section there under the help section and under your under your units you have the view cube so if you're familiar with autodesk software uh, the view cube is very you'll be used to it. it it's just basically whichever side of the cube you pick is where your view will go so i'll click uh, it says right there so i'm looking at the right on the 3d view i can click the corners to view multiple corners of the 3d view it, and so I'm, at the minute i'm looking at the top and these little arrows here rotate the cube round as well if you want to rotate your model so i'm going to go back to a corner just to show you um, X axis is the red line in the model space the Y axis is the green line and Z is the blue line that's pretty standard as well if you ever forget about it just go look at which ones which go looking up at your view cube and if you go look at your view cube you've got you can see you've got X Y and Z there as well and then when you want to start modeling you have sketch add transform and tools so if you click on sketch you've got all your sketch tools there which are, uh, are quite standard and then on the right hand side you have all your constraints uh, if you want to put perpendicular or parallel lines it'll stop you using as many dimensions to define it so it's going to come out of that you have add which is where you can create construction axes construction planes images and drawings transform is when you have a solid body in your part and you want to move it about so you can move it rotate it translate it align or mirror and then your tools is your actual modeling tools so you use these with your in in conjunction with your sketches to create um, 3d geometry so to get started now i'm going to click go up to my view cube and just i'm going to draw a nice simple shape i'm going to, go to click top so i'm drawing on the top plane and I'm going to draw, go to sketch and I'm going to draw a rectangle from the origin. So now I've, all I've done is click twice and drawn that rectangle. Go to press escape. And now I'm going to keep my finger on option. Sorry, not option, control. On Mac it's control. I get confused with the Windows and Mac keyboard shortcuts. Um, and I'm going to make this cube 100. And you can see when I put 100 in, it puts a little padlock there. And then I'm going to click this line here. And I'm going to make this so at the minute that 30 is not locked. So I'm going to make this by 75. I'm going to tick it. So now you can see the padlock there. So my dimensions are locked in for the size of my cube. But if I zoom out a little bit, my and I click this endpoint, I can still rotate it all over because it's not constrained. The only things that are locked in the sketch are my dimensions. So what I'm going to do is click this bottom, click this 
bottom end point, put that on the origin, and then we'll lock that. So now that point's locked on the origin. And then I'm going to click this line here on the bottom line, this edge, and I'm going to make it horizontal vertical. So now it's locked. So now my sketch is fully constrained. And if I zoom in, I think I've made a little mistake there. Yeah, I've not put that bang on the origin. So the, ori the origin is actually here, not there. So I'm, my end point's off, so I'm just going to click that, undo the padlock, and now I can freely move the cube. Sorry, rectangle, not cube. Make sure I put it on the origin this time. You should see it come up, say, origin. And then I'm going to click the padlock. So now I have a fully defined sketch. So now I know it's a nice simple one, but it's just a basic tutorial to get you used to sketching. And then I'm going to click close on that sketch. So now I've clicked close on that sketch. I'm going to just get a view. So I've changed my view cube view. And uh, by so now I'm looking at the front right in, a, in an isometric view. I'm going to click tools. I'm going to click extrude. So now the light blue shows that this can be selected to be extruded. So if I just don't hover over the rectangle, it shows you that it can't um, that it's a possible selection. So if you have multiple selections in a sketch, they'll all come up um, with that color. So I'm going to click it, and then you what? So now I've clicked it. It's gone a darker blue, and I'm going to just pull up, and I'm going to make it fifty, and then click enter. So now I have a 50 mil cube, I'm gonna click done. So now I've got a cube, what I want to do is just click these edges here. And I'm gonna put, if I pull, so I'll just click the edge and if I pull up away from the cube, it puts a chamfer on it. And if I push into the cube, it sorry, it puts a chamfer on it and when I pull out, it, it puts a fillet on it. So that's how you, a, a quick way to chamfer and fillet edges. So what I'm going to do is put a 10 mil chamfer on there, and then I'm going to put a 10 mil fillet on there. Radius 10, obviously. So that's a quick way to put chamfers on and fillets. And now if I use the view cube, I can move around onto different faces. I'm going to sketch on the right plane. I'm just going to click the face, click sketch. And now just do a circle. Radius 10. And now I can move this around to certain points. Or if you want to put it in the middle, you've got your midpoint there as well. So I'm just going to put it randomly in the middle. I'm going to click lock to so lock it in. I'm going to tick this X at the top to close this sketch. And I'm going to go to tools again. And I'm going to go to extrude again. And now it's asking me if the face is to extrude. But I can't obviously see my sketch. So I'm going to go to Click control, zoom out a bit, then keep my finger on shift, rotate it round, click my circle, and actually make a hole in my little cube. So the same process for extruding and making holes and taking away is the same. You just uh, pull, uh, pull your sketch, and it takes away the material if you want to make holes in the sketch. And the model so same again I can just click that edge if I pull it out it makes a it makes a chamfer I'm sorry a fillet and then if I push it in it makes a chamfer so I'll make, a, make that a chamfer so another nice easy thing you can do if I go to tools is sorry not tools if I go to transform I can cl click it faces and actually pull them in and out and it's a nice very graphic way of modeling it's something that I'm not used to I'm used to more sketch based modeling if you're used to and you can click faces and move them out as well and also you can shell click the face you can actually shell your item as well I know I've created a random shape, but I thought you I hope you found this little quick tutorial on the basics of how to use shape a 3D helpful. 
Um, if you have, uh, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.